So the winter's here and it's very cold and the heat has gone down in the car. We have no heat. We're absolutely freezing. So the point of this video, I was going to show you how to install a simple electric resistance heater in the vehicle. I'm not talking about one of those crappy cigarette socket heaters that, you know, barely heat up or barely clean the window. I'm talking about a proper elegant heating solution, maybe four or five hundred watts or something like that. And then I came across something very interesting, which is now going to be the point of this video. So while shopping around on the internet for 12 volt simple electric heaters that don't require diesel or coolant lines or anything, you know, with a high knowledge base, uh, I found something very interesting. Um, I noticed firstly a whole range of car heaters that you can plug into your cigarette socket or cup holder and they're designed to either warm your car, clear your window or both. And then I kind of wondered how this would work. So I bought this heater on Amazon. It was advertised as a 400 to 600 watt heater. And the idea is I'll hardwire this to the car's battery. I'll put a nice inline fuse in there. This is a 50 amp fuse, for example, something like this, heavy duty. I don't want to run something like this to the fuse box just because the wiring in there can't handle something of this wattage. So before I start, you're not only going to learn about, you know, why this heater is not so great, but you're also going to learn about calculating wire gauges, wire lengths, volts, amps, resistance, and a lot of cool stuff which I think you'll find really useful if you wish to do electronics in cars. So I just wanted to say that now before I get started. So back to my original point about cigarette adapter 12 volt heaters. And I found this interesting because a typical cigarette adapter in a vehicle right here usually has a fuse to protect the circuit, the wiring, and this is usually around 15 amps. It could be 20 amps, but it depends on the year, make, and model of the car. And the thing is, if the fuse is designed to blow at 15 amps, for example, then there's only so much current that we can actually draw from a cigarette adapter. So using this example here, we can actually work out the maximum current that we can draw from an average cigarette socket. So when the car is not running, the battery voltage will measure around 12.6 volts. If a battery measures 12 volts, then it's actually only 50% charged. It's a little common misconception. When the alternator is running and the battery is being charged, It'll usually register at something like 13.5, but 13.5 to 14.5 or something like this. So when the car is running and when the car is not running, we get two different voltages. So using something cool here called Watt's Law, that says that power, which is measured in watts, so that will be the wattage of our heater, is the voltage, which we know right here, multiplied by the current, which is represented by I. And don't worry why current is measured as an I and not an A, uh, but this will be the amps, for example. So using our cool little triangle here, maybe I'll do a different videos on these in depth, but basically the wattage will be the voltage multiplied by the current right here, which is amps. So now we say watts, which is the power, and then we know that our voltage, say, right here is 12.6, for example, multiplied by 15 amps, which will be the maximum theoretical current draw we can draw from this circuit without our fuse blowing, which equals 1 a 9 watts. So if we connect a more powerful device to this circuit, it's going to overload the circuit, draw too much current, then our fuse is going to blow, and, uh, you know, we're going to need to replace the fuse here. Again, if our fuse is rated uh, 20 amps max, then the equation will look something like that. But you get a realistic maximum current you can draw from a standard cigarette socket in a car. So what does that even mean, 189 watts? Well, this is an example right here. This is a household heater. It's very small. There's the size of my hand against the heater. If we look at the underside of this heater here, you can see it is a 2 kilowatt heater, so 2,000 watts. So imagine what a little heater like this would do, how much heat it would generate, and then compare that to 189 watts. Not much power, right? And even if the car is running, we'll substitute the running voltage right here, which is 13.5. We get something like 202 watts, something like that. So still pretty low. And this is why when you read the reviews for these cigarette adapter heaters right here on Amazon, eBay, you'll notice that the reviews are pretty bad. You know, there's so many one star ones, people saying it's crap and uh, yeah, a lot of funny comments. 
And a four to six hundred watt heater is a lot better than a cigarette socket heater where it maxes out as we calculated 189 watts when the car isn't running. So double or triple the heat, right? So the first thing I noticed was it was advertised as four to six hundred watts, but there's only one switch on here. Normally you'd have like a three-way switch, so you'd go off, then you'd go four hundred, and then one more for six hundred watts. So it's a bit of a mystery how I get four or six hundred watts out of this, which would indicate a low and a high setting. So now I'm pretty suspicious about this. So let's give up on the fact this is a 600 watt heater. We'll say it's a 400 watt heater, which is pretty good, right? So a 400 watt heater, how efficient is that? So there's a lot of misconception about efficiency. Um, actually a heater just like this one, a resistive heater, is actually 100% efficient. Every watt goes into making heat. It is 100% efficient. So this 400 watt heater right here, we're going to get 400 watts coming out of it in the form of some nice heating power right out of here. So the other thing I noticed was something quite suspicious or potentially dangerous were these two wires coming out of the heater right here. If this was a four to 600 watt heater, then they're quite skinny wires, right? Um, I imagine they could overheat, melt or something like that. And wires need to be sized appropriately for the power that your device consumes. These are 14 gauge wires. You can see they're quite skinny. And talking about wire gauges, the thinner the wire, the higher the gauge. So 14 gauge is thinner than a six gauge, for example. And I felt a little bit unsure about why these were so thin, given the amount of claimed wattage of this heater. So there's really two rules when sizing wire for vehicles. The thicker the wire, the more current it can handle. This is 14 gauge, so it's somewhat thick, but kind of thin at the same time. So the thicker the wire, the more current, the more amps. The next thing to consider is the length of wire. The longer the wire, the more voltage drop you're going to experience from carrying this over long distances. So therefore, we need to make the wire slightly thicker the longer the wire needs to be. These are really the only two things to concern yourself with sizing wire for cars. Once we know the power requirements for our device, we can select the appropriate wire which will suit our device. Then, and only then, do we have the wire size, we can select a fuse, and the fuse is designed to protect the wiring, protect the circuit. So always get the wire first and fuse afterwards. So as this heater here, they haven't really supplied us any wiring to the battery. We just have two little terminal ends here. We're going to need to supply our own wiring. So we need to calculate the gauge of wire that we need. As it's come with 14 gauge wire, we could assume that this is absolutely fine, but we need to check. I'm going to assume this is a 400 watt heater right here. And I want to put it around five or six feet away from the source, the battery in this case. Let's calculate what gauge wire we need need using those things. So now let's say our nice new heater that just arrived today is 400 watts. We'll give up on the 600. We'll just assume it's a 400 watt heater. That's what they advertised, right? There's nothing wrong with that. So now we need to add a fuse to this circuit, which will support the wiring of the circuit. Now the fuse, like I say, protects the wiring. We don't want a random fire or melted cables or anything like that. We have to fit this fuse to protect the circuit. So what size fuse do we need? How do we fuse a circuit like this? And how thick should the wires be? So again, using our cool little Watts Law triangle right here, we have a couple of things we already know. The voltage, the voltage of the battery when the car is not running, 12.6 volts. The power, well, 400 right there. So we have 400. And what we want to work out is the ampage there, and that will be the max amps of this circuit. When the heater is running at 400 watts, we just put the division right there. And that will give us a grand total of 31.75 amps. So we need a fuse that's 31.75 amps, which doesn't really exist. So we'll go to a 35 amp fuse and that will be a suitable fuse to protect this wiring and circuit right here. Okay, so before we get ahead of ourselves and actually determine we're going to be using a 35 amp fuse, let's calculate the gauge of the wire that we're going to be using on the circuit. Now you can find various wire calculators on the internet, just search for something like DC uh, car 12 volt wire calculator, something of that nature, and you'll come up with various websites. I like this one, it's on a wire barn. 
and you can just input a few variables and calculate a rough gauge of wire that you're going to have for your circuit. So uh, we have a 12 volt battery here. Um, the amps we said 31.75. I think that was right. We calculated the ampage of our heater based on the watts and everything just now. And say we want to put it six feet away from the car battery. We've measured a rough distance from the battery to where the heater is going to go in our car. We've worked it out. It's around six feet. So I'm going to come down here and click the calculate button. And it gives us various options. So you see here where it says size OK. That means that this gauge of wire will be acceptable. So you can run 10 gauge wire up to 7.57 feet. Anything over that then we're going to need to be using 8 gauge wire which is slightly thicker. And you can run 8 gauge wire up to 12 feet. So this is sort of how these calculators work. They're pretty good. If you want to be super safe you can go to 8 gauge. There's nothing really wrong going thicker other than the cost associated with that. And perhaps maybe the holes you're going to be putting in the firewall to thread this wire. So we could say 10 gauge or 8 gauge to be super safe. So it's pretty easy to work out the thickness of the wire using a calculator like this. So now we've calculated that 10 gauge wiring is acceptable for this distance from the battery for this power source, maybe 8 gauge to be safe, uh, with a 35 amp fuse to you know protect the circuit. Why the hell does this have 14 gauge wire, which is a lot smaller coming from the housing of this heater? It doesn't make sense, right? Is this going to uh, overheat, you know, cause a fire on this segment of the heater? Do we have to rewire our bigger wire into this heater? What is going on here? Using a wiring calculator for a 14 gauge wire, you'd typically have a 15 amp fuse to protect this circuit. But wait, do you remember at the start of the video when I talked about the cigarette adapter, how typically you would have a 15 amp fuse on the cigarette adapter? How is this different from that? Do I just have a, an overpowered cigarette adapter heater, except I don't even get the adapter on the end of this? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this heater apart. We're going to pull out all the screws and see what's going on here. For, so for me, it's a little bit of a mystery at the moment. So let's take this heater apart. While I'm here, I'll do a little unboxing if you do wish to uh, get one of these for whatever reason. This didn't come with it. I'm not, I'm not even sure why it's in here. What did come with it were these little vent hoses here. And the idea is you connect one to each end right there. And you would have maybe one running to the uh, cabin of the car or truck and the other one may be pointing on the window to clear the window. There's a couple of mounting brackets, um, you know, not really much else in there. So one thing I noticed was how badly this was put together. Look at the screws just sticking out there and uh, I have a little suspicion they're not even machine screws. They look like wood screws, which is again quite interesting. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, a regular old wood screw in the Well, a lot of them holding this together. So uh, my hopes aren't high right now. Let's get this taken apart. So now I've removed all the wood screws from this metal device right here. Let's lift the cover and have a look together. So we have our switch there. So there's the red switch. We have a couple fans there, which are, I guess, going to keep it cool and blow it around. Um, but yeah, here's the uh, heating element right here. So it's... a uh, pretty crude design. I'm not even sure why that is not mounted on there. <laughs> so, oh boy. Okay, so yeah, this is the heating element. And what we can do here is measure the resistance of this heating element to work out the actual wattage of this heater. Pretty cool trick, right? So we can measure the resistance of this using a simple multimeter, something like that. Very easy to do. And how this heating element works, if you're curious, it converts electrical energy into heat through the process of resistance, otherwise known as dual heating. The electric current passing through the element encounters resistance, which produces heat. It's pretty simple, right? So to measure the resistance correctly and properly, we need to remove this from the circuit. Otherwise, we're going to be measuring the resistance of pretty much everything in here, which is going to give us a false reading. So that, as this one's already disconnected, half the job's been done for me. I'm going to disconnect the other side and remove it from the mountain and then get a reading on this. So resistance is measured in ohms and to measure ohms on pretty much any multimeter, we want our leads, one in the COM port right there and the other one 
Uh, there's a little omega sign there, and that will be our ohms indicator, so we have them both in here. And then following that pattern, we want to move this to the ohm symbol, and there's the omega right there. Now this is set up and ready to measure resistance. So I'm going to be measuring where those terminals were mounted to the heating element just as before. I have the positive one on one side, and here comes the negative. And when the reading finally settles down, we're going to get a nice result right there in ohms which is 2 ohms, 2 ohms exactly, well maybe 1.9, let's say 2. So now we know the resistance of our heating element is only 2 ohms, we can use Ohm's law combined with Watt's law to work out what exactly what we want, the output wattage of this heater. Were we ripped off? Was it 400 watts? Let's find out. So the formula is power, which is watts, is the voltage squared divided by the resistance, which is 2 ohms. So that's 2 ohms. The voltage squared will say the car's not running, 12.6 volts. And that is 79.38 watts. That's a far cry from our advertised 400 to 600, isn't it? I feel like we got a little bit ripped off here. So the good news, we're not going to be causing any fires because the bad news, it has less heating power than a warm fart after a bad curry. Okay, so the bottom line is this is not a 400 watt heater, not remotely close. As we calculated, it's around 80 watts. It's going to give you 80 watts of heating power. So I hope you've learned something useful from this video. Again, it's not about how awful this heater is, but about the size of the wiring, length of the wiring, watts, currents, amps, all that useful stuff. So if you do want to apply this to another project, you can hit the ground running with a lot of the information in this video. If you do want to get a different heater, I'm not saying all heaters are bad. No, not at all, just this particular one. But you do know now that some of the things to pay attention to in order to not get ripped off in the future. So good luck staying warm this winter. I hope this video helped you. Check out our channel for some other videos. We have lots of different videos on cars and automotive things. So take care and thank you for watching.